throw in fast approaching in this under 16 final. It's Eirua in the green and white against the Kilkenny like stripes of Niavura. And for Eirua, captained in the centre of the field by Eamon McGrath. The Niavura skipper is fullback Patrick Rogers. These sides have met twice already this season a draw in the divisional final. Eirua winning the replay comprehensively by 4-10 to 1-5 and tonight they lock horns in the most prestigious of competitions, that being the county final. The prize for the victors, a very great one indeed. And straight away on the offensive it's Eirua. This is a very useful move, it's Jamie MacDonald, the full forward, who's moved into a really good position and it's him that's fisted it right over the bar. And in the first minute of play, Eirua off the mark with a very incisive run from MacDonald and MacDonald, who scored prolifically indeed in the divisional final off the mark once more and uh, Eiru off to a really good start which will please obviously Shane Ward and Gregory Sweeney down in front of us. Peter Goller on analysis, uh, your take on that particular move? Great start for Eiru, a good link up play between midfielder Darren Gettins and the mercurial Jimmy McDonald. Jimmy on his day can beat anybody. And he, he keeps his be, head, he can be the star man here today. He could be called into action again because Colm Kelly from corner back sending a probing ball inside and Eirua moving really well. MacDonald was available once more but there was a foul there on Gettins. Pulled to the ground and Eirua's attacking moves coming off really well. Our match official Ronan Kennedy here this evening on a perfect evening indeed for Gaelic football. We're only in the second minute of the contest and Eirua with a really good chance to double their advantage. I noticed their early point from Jamie McDonald still hasn't gone up on the scoreboard, but it did count from where we were standing. David McGurn to kick five points in the divisional final, four from Freeze, and he's opened his account from a placed ball here this evening. A David McGurn score, and Eirua two points to the good. And, well, the strategy from the Eirua bench, already obvious, Peter, get the ball in quickly and fast, and it's reaping dividends. Get the ball in quickly and fast. They know they have the forwards to win it. If we win primary possession, get the ball into those forwards. There's no doubt they have the scoring potential. Porrick Patton back at centre half pack tonight. What a key man he might be. Daniel Kelly in goal. Ryan Patton at full back with Matthew Maguire and Colin Kelly either side of him. We'll give you the full team in just a moment. But Aru are on the offensive again. It's the greyhound like Gettins working ever so hard out there. Colin Kelly also involved in the attack. And Eddie Lynch has a chance to get down on this ball. He does so. Also, Keen Hurler, the captain, Eamon McGrath, over the top. Great ball indeed. Looking for MacDonald. He's found him. MacDonald coming away from goal, trying to create a shooting opportunity onto the right peg and curling it goalward. But it's gone out to the left and wide. A really good chance. Going a begging. Let's give you the teams. Kelly in goal for Eirua. Matthew Maguire at right full back. Ryan Patton at full back with Colin Kelly left full back. Patrick Kelly's at right half back. Patrick Gillespie, I should say, is at right half back. Porrick Patton at centre half back and Niall Harley completes the half back line. At centre field, the formidable pairing of McGrath and Darren Gettins, but already Colin Kelly has pulled away out to that position to offer support. Johnny Gettins, Michael McNeely, and James Kelly make up the half forward line, while inside it's Eddie Lynch, Jamie MacDonald, and David McGurn. And two of that uh, full forward line already off the mark, Peter, in McGurn and MacDonald. Yeah, and that last attack should have resulted in a score too. A brilliant take in the middle of the park by Colm Kelly should have resulted in a score. And Jamie just gnarly wide. Kelly really is Mr. Utility. He's played in so many different positions and this evening he's out around the middle of the park. Both sides know each other so, so well. They've locked horns twice already this year as we've pointed out and they're right half forward now for Niamh Wurr that being Sean McCafferty has a chance he needs a little bit of help the pass isn't a particularly good one looking for his wing half back that's Patrick Delap. Delap needs help and needs support big man coming through the middle of the park is Jamie Boyle Boyle needing some help Eventually it comes in the shape of his wing half back, Connor Boyle, but a poor ball from Connor Boyle. That's mopped up by his opposite number. Patrick Gillespie, father Paddy watching on anxiously in front of us, giving it to Lynch. Gillespie shows deft footwork, beats the tackle and gives it off to Eddie Lynch. Lynch now making ground. Gillespie's continued his run. This is good. Oh, the pass just asking too much of David McGurn right over the corner forward's head. His brother Ronan, of course, involved in the senior team. Jamie McDonald, fortunate to get away with the push in the back. McGurn, great chance of a goal, but pops it over the bar. A second point for the corner forward. And, well, I'm sure the Niamhwara supporters, uh, Peter, uh, even through green and gold glasses, surely that was a push by Jamie McDonald. It looked like a push, surely, but surely the, the hard work paid off. He works very hard, Jamie. He started really well. If he can keep this up for a full 60 minutes, he's going to be key. He's going to be pivotal. He's going to be the go-to man for area. Just over four minutes on the stopwatch in the first half of this under-16 county final. It's been quite some time since Eiru over top of the pile at under-16. In fact, you've got to hark right back to 97 when a certain Jim Kane was in charge and Jim is down watching the game with his brother Teddy in front of us as Eiru arrayed once more. Look where MacDonald has got to. He's getting through a power of work. A good pass from Darren Gettins. Still MacDonald. Back to Kelly. 
Stylish in possession. His father a dub, of course, having enjoyed the victory last week. And that's off to wing half forward, James Kelly. Really good score from James Kelly. And Eirua piling on the misery now for Niamh Wura with only five minutes on the stopwatch. Four points to no score. Peter. Yeah, great to play there between Jimmy McDonald, Kelly and eventually James Kelly, who played minor football all year with us. And a uh, super talent and a brilliant athlete and absolutely knows where the goals are. Well, so many of this Aru uh, aside, and indeed, Peter, there's at least four or five that have tasted minor uh, league football. Oh yeah, a lot of these guys, and a lot of them that will again, I would imagine, when their under-16 campaign is over. Kilcar, of course, lying in wait for the minors, and much speculation about when that game will be played. That's a great ball inside. It was Gettins to Kelly, it just beat Kelly, he's kept it in, on the end line, needs support. Kelly taking a third solo out of it, coming round the shooting chance created, but a great block down by Jack O'Brien. Manly play from the Niavura back, but his distribution lets him down, and Darren Gettins has turned it over for Eirua. Here's a chance now for Harley to press forward. Eirua sussing out their options, it's back with Big McGrath, centre field. MacDonald again the target, oh great take, defending the ball with his body, getting out onto the right peg. That is wonderful football from MacDonald, it must be said. A second point from play and he's destroying the inside line of the Niavura cover. Yeah, Gettins and Harley done really well in the middle of the park, they seem to be totally dominant around that sector and it seems to be get the ball to Jimmy with MacDonald. Get it to Jimmy, he'll do damage. Great balance and can kick off both left and right, his two points tonight have come from his right and we're only six minutes into the contest it's going well for the Arua management team of Shane Ward assisted by Gregory Sweeney both of whom contributed a fair bit at underage level themselves while playing Sweeney also a soccer goalie of some renown but the 97 Arua side was backboned by the likes of James O'Donnell Thomas McPhailham now domiciled in Australia and uh, many others, Peter, in that particular side. You had a look back through the annals earlier. I want to look back at the 97 team. Just interesting to know of a team of 23 of a panel in 97. Five went on to play senior football for Area, which isn't a great it isn't a great return. And we'd like to hope that of this under-16 team, successful or not today, they are a very, very good team. And we'd be hoping to get a rich crop of players playing right up to senior football from them. So many of them talented in other codes, be it basketball or hurling as well, Peter? Oh yeah, there's no doubt about it and has bonded this team together. The fact that the hurling and the football, this under-16 team through John Rooney and Edward Lynch have taken a lot of these players on the 16 hurlers right up through on the 12s and the 14 and played a lot of them dual players and no doubt has had bonded them together. Well, it's been an interesting season. They were nine points up in their drawn divisional final. Uh, subsequently, came back to snatch a draw with a late point in that particular game and then in the replay as we pointed out comprehensive victors having a full 14 points to spare in the replay 4-10 to 1-5 McGrath jumping high at the centre of the park he's probably the biggest man there punching that one down but it's broken very kindly indeed for Paddy Delap, the wing half back for Niavura winning the free and toe poking it over the top looking for options inside Hugh Boyle provides one they raid, the Arua defence having to give chase. Paddy Gillespie's got some ground to make up, but Matthew Maguire marshalling his corner well, has switched from right to left full back. And the distribution is really, really poor in the Niavura attack, it must be said, and uh, that makes it easy for Darren Gettins to clear his lines. We haven't seen Porrick Patton yet, but he's well ever present at centre half back. Very stylish player indeed, as Aru and Gettins raid once more. Brilliant two ball. twins in the side, Johnny and Darren. Their father, Jimmy, here watching them this evening. McGurn has a chance cutting in from the corner, goes for his own score, and does deliver it. Really good work indeed, and the Aru advantage being stretched out. McGurn moving back out the park, playing in something of a more conventional half forward role but he started the game well and that if I'm not mistaken is a third point for him the Aru advantage now six points to no score not even nine minutes on the stopwatch yeah it came from a bit of sloppy nervousness in the Nivora forward line the Aru backs cleared it went to Johnny Gettins who put out an absolutely brilliant ball into David McGorn and David had no probably stopping it over the bar no problem at all to David going well this evening David McGurn with three points Jamie McDonald with two and James Kelly with one Niamh were really struggling in that third sector as Porrick Patton mops that up catching it over the head very stylish indeed Carl Lacey mould as forward it goes and McGurn scorer of the last point is on the ball looking for help from Eddie Lynch Lynch willing and available good run this two Niamh were defenders converge on him it's not going to be easy and eventually the referee giving the free against the young Aerua corner forward so many of this side returning to Kalosh the Column Kill in the last couple of days where they look forward to a long winter ahead at the desks and in the exam halls football being a momentary distraction for them as forward go 
the near four men there, live wire corner forward, James Ferry trying to create a little bit of space, but really they've been shut out of the game. Back it goes to full forward Cameron Harley, and this long passage of hand passing resulting in no shooting opportunity. Eventually Jack Boyle has a go, but that's easily mapped up, uh, sending it inside. Foul given away there by Cameron Harley, and Porrick Patton will take a chance to draw his breath and send this ball out the park. Just 10 minutes on the stopwatch. Aru a six points. No score for Niamh Wurra. Big aim and McGrath taking his time, motoring through the centre. Captain Kalosh the column kill to an underage basketball title earlier this year. Here goes Gettins. Wonderful pace and balance. Johnny Gettins to McGurn. Back to Gettins once more. Goes around the outside, looking for the shooting opportunity. Bit like Kieran Donaghy. This one's going to drop short into the arms of Jared Boyle. The Niamh Wurra netminder. Out to Connor Boyle. Connor taking his time, being put under pressure there delivering the ball up the park but the distribution from a lot of these Niavura players it's not what we've been seeing in the earlier rounds of the competition from them and with almost 11 minutes on the stopwatch it's still Eirua six points to no score great start great start but just in the last four or five minutes Eirua have adopted a tactic of carrying the ball as opposed to kicking the ball into Jamie McDonald which reaps such good dividends very early on in the game I'd like to see them go back to that more direct game and keep Jamie in at the edge of the square and no doubt it'll reap rewards well he's had to move out the park looking for possession and he's now uh, on the 45 meter line he's making a run inside on the back of his defender as David McGurn releases McGrath back to McGurn once more just inside the 45 meter line it's with Kelly now very stylish player great balance giving it to McGurn once more McGurn taking his time looking for the overlap McGrath provides it McGrath's pass just a little bit behind the attacking player inside who is Gettins but Johnny Gettins makes light of it and that's a great point Slightly off balance, a bit like Michael Murphy, showing strong, sending the ball between the posts, and Aru and now further stretch out their advantage. Seven points now to no score, Peter, and we're not even 12 minutes in. And we're not even 12 minutes in. It's all looking very good at the minute for Aru. Again, that was the tank was a wee bit laborious, and only for the skill of Johnny Gettins. Super score off balance over the bar. I'd like to see them again. I'd like to see them a little more direct. Now these two Gatton's players are quite a handful indeed. They have a younger brother on the bench tonight. Older brother Brian also played some football before leaving the country. Domiciled at Finner outside Ballyshannon. Bundoran indeed could have beckoned at one stage as Michael McNeely comes forward and the Kildoni man shows how it can be done. That's really good stuff indeed and that's five out of six Aru attackers now having scored. But more to the point, the advantage stretched out. Eight points to no score and they're practically out of sight. But Peter, we must bear in mind that in the divisional final, the drawn game, they led by nine and Niamh Warren did a bit of a, a meath on them, making a superb comeback that day. Yeah, there was actually a ten-point turnaround in that game at one stage. So uh, this game is by far and away from over and nobody will know it better than the two lads in the lines. Absolutely, as Gregory Sweeney and Shane Ward look on, but their young side are really playing a phenomenal first half at the moment and the first half which as I stress isn't even 13 minutes old good link up play Kelly takes the hit marches on inside to Gettins this time it's Darn Darn is tossed and well going to ground and uh, winning the free at the expense of Jack O'Brien free kick taken quickly McDonald he hasn't had his hands on the ball for a number of minutes and shows a little bit of rust that one's robbed from him by Patrick Rogers McDonald shows a little bit of frustration and the referee is going to call him over and well a moment of madness from McDonald because Niavura were going nowhere back up the park. He showed a little bit of indiscipline and he could be about to pay a price for it. So the referee, uh, Ronan Kennedy, is showing the full forward yellow and Peter Facet of his game. We see so many brilliant things and he's only a, a teenager but he didn't need to pick up that yellow card. You know, there's no doubt about it, Jimmy. All his plays on the edge, he's always in danger of that stuff. If he could rid that from his game, there's no doubt about this guy could be a superstar. Matthew Maguire doing well in defence there, but it's Connor Boyle who sends it forward for the Nia Vura men. There's an overlap on from their big midfielder, Patrick Gillespie. There we are, of course, having a player by the same name. This one's in dangerously. Daniel Kelly reads it well. First touch from open play for the young goalkeeper. Sends it out to Porrick Patton in the high-vis boots. Can certainly be seen here if the lights come on. Forward he sends it. Gettins the target once more. They're practically identical, Darren and Johnny, although they may dispute that, but in terms of footballing ability, they're two fine players. Great ball towards McDonald. He'll keep this in play. Blistering pace again. Good balance. Out to McGurn. Trying to weave an opportunity for himself. Carving it out onto his favourite right boot. Oh, that's a special kick. A fourth point from David McGurn. 
and Eirua now moved the advantage out to nine points but on that occasion McDonald chasing a lost opportunity back to McGurn same old result same result long directed ball in from Gettins McDonald will get the 60-40 stuff there's absolutely no doubt about it but this David McGurn guy is as cool as a cucumber he's brilliant from dead ball he does nothing fancy he does all the simple stuff brilliantly a superly executed point well his first cousins Fine players indeed in their own right. I'm not talking about Kenneth and Martin, I'm talking about Barry and Stephen Ward, although Kenneth could play some indeed in his own on his day as uh, Sean McCafferty sends this one forward. For Paddy Gillespie it is this time. Tenacious in defence, sending it back up the park with interest, but Eddie Lynch just won't keep that one in play. And uh, the linesman from the Four Masters Club down in front of us, Lee Jordan, giving it the way of the Neavura men, and rightly so. No dispute about that. As Eirua draw breath, we're at the quarter hour mark in this contest. It's gone really well from a Ballyshannon perspective. And well, with a nine point cushion, Neavura yet to open their account. Neavura club down in the banks in Annagree, making huge strides. An intermediate title under the tutelage of former Donegal boss John Doherty. Of course, the referee Robbie O'Donnell on duty last Sunday in Croke Park in the All Ireland minor match between Dublin and Galway. As David McGurn sets off on another attempt to try and torment the Neavour recover but that's well cut out good defending back there by Sean Burns as Eamon McGrath gives chase two Neavour players almost colliding there and well they're not making life easy for themselves inside their own defence making a number of very basic mistakes Eamon McGrath turns it over Eddie Lynch now goal chance for McGordon chance to put it in the back of the net he'll do it yes he did he sold dummies left and right Stevie McDonald style poking it home to an empty net and that's a disaster for the Neavura cover because really that ball should have been back up the park maybe it's easy from where we're standing but David McGurn rounding the goalie slotting it home and Eirua now 1-9 to no score and we have 16 minutes plus on the stopwatch but McGurn was never going to miss the full back line absent without leave all down to the deliciousness of their captain Eamon, Eamon McGrath who was absolutely brilliant in the tackle stole the ball and this guy McGurn everybody knew he wasn't going to miss it because he's coolness personified Eddie Lynch also there helping out McGrath who turned it over great combination play McGurn spotted inside very unselfish indeed by the young Aru and then playing the ball to the player in the best position and well it shows on the scoreboard they're really capitalizing they're making hay here and the sun has set in McCool Park 1-9 now for Eirua no score for Neavura and we have about 13 minutes remaining in this half and I'm sure the Neavura backroom team very anxious to get their side into the dugout and into the dressing rooms as Colum Kelly beats that one out of his own defense Porrick Patton long cut out in the center of the park and Jack Boyle goes on a mazy run, beats two Eirua players, is fouled as he tried to get by Harley and Gettins. The referee gives the free, but that's a desperate kick from Hugh Boyle. And Harley, Niall Harley has it once more. Coming forward now. Oh, Gettins takes a heavy shoulder. That was a very, very heavy hit. Both players went at that ball full-blooded. And Gettins certainly came out the worst. And the pass from Harley wasn't favouring Darren Gettins. He went for it bravely as only he would. And well, he's paid a price and Peter, he shook up as a result of that. We yeah. saw Carl Lacey take a hit like that in Croker, but I'm sure that Darren will be back on his feet very shortly. Yeah, Harley done him no favour with the ball, but there's no doubt about it that the Neivora defender was uh, meant absolutely nothing in the attack. It was very fair, very innocuous. He did hit him hard, but very fairly. And happily, Gettins is already about to step back to his feet, but it was a hard, honest tackle. And it's been a sporting game that we've witnessed so far here in McCool Park on this the last day of August 2011 as Eirua bid for under 16 silverware badly needed trophy potentially making its way to the winding banks of Erin at underage levels huge strides being made at under 14 level and indeed minor level as well and Eirua and Neavura have of course met twice in Division 3 of the All County League at first team level this season Neavura recording a victory down in the banks in Annagree earlier in the season and well, Aru are reversing that result in recent weeks in Father Tierney Park. Gettins is okay, fit to go on. Porrick Patton to take the free. Patton looking for movement. Eamon McGrath is available. He spots him. McGrath now has support available. This is Kelly taking his time, living in Cashelard. 
Kelly just waits for the right moment. He's also a wonderful hurler. That's really good. Took on two of them, beat them at his ease, took the hit for the team, giving it inside to Gettens. Darren, who was hurt moments ago, falls nicely now for Darren once more. It's off to that player, James Kelly. Has already scored a good point this evening. Paddy Gillespie to Jamie McDonald. Oh, blocked down. Ambitious. McDonald's got to be careful. He's on a yellow, lunged in there. And did the referee spot it? I think he did. He's calling him across. And I suspect he'll just give him a warning, but Jamie's got to be careful. He's being called across here. He's on that yellow, and he did, well, you can say the ball was there, but he did use a boot, Peter, in his attempt to try and get it. Absolutely, and he used an open fist too, and Ronan, Ronan Kennedy gave him a very stern warning. Had he not had picked up a yellow card before, that probably would have been a yellow card. He was desperately lucky to stay on the field, and he, he needs to be very, very careful. And there's only... 20 minutes gone in this game and Jamie has got two ticks from the referee already. He needs to be very careful. Heru a third of the way to the trophy at the moment. 1-9 to no score. They're playing like men possessed down there in fairness and uh, making life difficult for me if we're all over the park as uh, James Kelly is penalised for pulling there on Patrick Rogers. And if we're a badly need a score now, here's an overlap. It's Connor Boyle. Beats the tackle of Eddie Lynch. Plays it in in the direction of Jack O'Brien. Chased there by his opposite number, Porrick Patton. And Patton shows great strength, great discipline and great balance to win that ball back. Out to Big Eamon McGrath. McGrath taking his time. His young brother Shane is already showing signs at under 14 level of being a very fine player too. As Harley is partially blocked down. Lynch now. And it's with Gettins. Johnny Gettins. To Eamon McGrath. Oh, it just ran away from him at the last moment. And James Ferry wins the free. And rightly so for Niavura. Sprayed out to the far side. Oh, the centre half back caught waiting on that ball. That's Jack O'Brien. And Porrick Patton wasn't going to let him away with a schoolboy error like that. Inside to McDonald. Now time to see some more of McDonald's style and quality. Two points already this evening. Goes for one from distance. He has landed it. That's a really good kick. He was a good 35, 36 metres out there. And Peter, they say that's an art we don't see enough of. Kicking from distance, McDonald can do it. This man has it in abundance. If you just, the other aspect of his game, if he could just quell. But again, it came from a great rob by centre half back. Porrick, Porrick Pat Patton from his opposite number. Uh, he's a super tackler. He's a super reader of the game, Porrick Patton. But this man, McDonald, if he could just concentrate on one aspect of his attacking game, he, he could be anything. He's a great man to have as a target inside. That's great fielding from Gettins to Kelly, who's really complementing the centre field pairing of McGrath and Gettins. McDonald again. Bundles of energy, bundles of pace, coming away out from his full forward position. Distribution inside, almost covering through for Johnny Gettins. But Nivora reading the situation, and Jamie Boyle now spraying it out the park, looking for options and looking for support. As they raid, Nivora a little bit disillusioned at the moment with how this game is treating them. A lot of strength there and the referee perhaps harshly penalising Jack Boyle. He showed a, a strong arm. We saw Ryan Bradley and Eamon McGee do it time after time in Croke Park last Sunday. Peter, a little bit harsh on the Neavora defender? Maybe with the handoff, but I do think he overcarried. He took about five or six steps and yeah, probably Ronan Kennedy could have let him go, give him a wee bit of advantage. There's two men hanging out of him. Uh, they find it very difficult. The Neavora men are finding it very, very difficult to get the ball into the forward line. 1-10 for Aru and no score for Niavura and we've just over seven minutes remaining in this first half. Jamie MacDonald high and over the top. The target is Gettins but it was just a little bit short for Gettins. As the black and amber stripes of Niavura, Kilkenny wearing their jerseys into battle of course and the Liam McCarthy decider in Crook Park on Sunday. They'll hope for better fortunes against Tipperary. Great rob by Gettins. Darren this time to Eamon McGrath now. He rounds his opponent, Sean McCafferty, with some ease. Inside to Darren Gettins. Johnny, rather, and Johnny outside of the right boot. And a rare wide from the Eirua attacking sextet. They've been going really, really well indeed. 1-10 to no score. And, uh, well, we move towards the last six minutes of this first half. Yeah, it's all one way. Traffic, there's no doubt about it. Naaman McGrath in the middle of the park has to get some credit. He's doing an absolutely Trojan amount of work. Uh, he winning up broken balls, picking up balls, laying off balls, taking them back. He's doing a Trojan amount of work in the middle of the park. Playing a captain's role, there's no doubt. A little bit of off the ball stuff going on there between him and McGrath and Patrick Gillespie. The referee tells them to cool it. And uh, Niavora have the advantage of a free, which Connor Boyle has latched onto. Gets around Harley, sprays it inside. And 
chance now. They've got to try and create something from here as James Ferry sets off. Matthew Maguire sticking close. Maguire not giving him an inch. Maguire and Ferry. Maguire pulls the jersey. Referee allows play to continue, but he saw no advantage and gives the free in from just outside the 13 metre line, but inside the 20 metre line. And surely now a place kicker like Sean McCafferty, who played at full forward earlier in the season, will seize on the opportunity to put Niavour on the scoreboard. How badly they need it. Just five minutes and 20 seconds remaining in this first half. That's a good kick from McCafferty. There was pressure on, and he sends over. A first of the evening for Niavur and more to the point gives their quite substantial support which have travelled east from Anagree and Townlands adjoining. Something to cheer about. 110 to 1 now, Peter. Yeah, the corner, corner forward, Q Boyle done really well. Matthew Maguire had him beat and unfortunately Boyle got round him and he pulled his jersey. Referee gave an advantage, seen no advantage coming and rightly blew it up and the free was expertly taken for after 25 minutes Niavur's first score. 110 for Eirua, one point for Niavura as Eirua raid again. Great understanding between McGurn and Gettins, and Gettins is still going. They just can't keep up with him inside to McDonald. McDonald goes for his own score, and it was. He had every right to try and take it on. He was on the edge of the square, very close to being inside. But a great series of link ups between David McGurn, Johnny Gettins, and Jamie McDonald almost resulted in goal number two for McDonald. But it wasn't to be. I suppose, Peter, at the end of the day, Eru have to concentrate on putting every score possible on the board, and there was a real chance there. It was a great move. It was a super move. Brilliant foresight by David, David McGoran to see. Gettins, Gettins give a great ball to Jamie. Jamie went for the goal. He's right to go for the goal. It would have been a brilliant goal had it come out. Darren Gettins, distribution letting him down. It's gone out over the line, and Gettins made a great catch there in the centre of the park. Really, Eru on top in so many different sectors. Niavur are looking dispirited at the moment. Look for options up the park. Jamie Boyle comes forward. Jamie Boyle looking for Ferry once more. Goes with Maguire. That's great corner back play from Matthew Maguire. His uncle Sylvester would be proud, indeed his dad. Eamon certainly is down in front of us. And his uncle Cal, of course, on the on the camera here this evening. 110 to one point as we move towards the last three minutes of this first half. Horrick Patton looking for options. Oh, not a great ball, but Eamon McGrath makes light of it, taking it over the head. McGrath will send a long one down the park. The right thing to do when under pressure, taking the pressure off his own defence, but it's well read by Boyle, deep in the heart of the Neavora defence, linking up now with Sean McCafferty, their only point scorer. And they look for Ferry inside again, but it's blocked down. The Eirua defence. Very vigilant indeed, and indeed their midfielders closing their opponents down at every opportunity. Kelly to Gillespie, this is a good move. Gillespie inside, McGurn's got to open it up here. McGurn caught for pace a little and trying to get to that ball. It's gone out over the end line and a chance going a begging. But David McGurn is Aru's top scorer to this point with 1-4. McDonald has helped himself to three points and a point each for Johnny Gettins, Michael McNeely and James Kelly. Just over two minutes remaining in this half and, uh, well, really, Shane Ward and Gregory Sweeney, Peter, can kind have of few complaints with how it's panned out for them so far on a perfect evening for football. Perfect evening for football. McCool Park is looking fantastic. There's a very good support for both teams here. Area way, way into ascendancy. Uh, I'm not quite sure what Nate Ward can do to turn this one around, but we know from past they've turned a nine-point deficit at half-time before into a one-point lead, so nothing is, nothing is impossible. A long speculative kick there that goes wide and they're really bereft of ideas up front, Sean. Absolutely, uh, 12 points now, the margin area are very much in control and you feel that the experiences learned earlier this season will surely stand them in good stead in the second half of this evening's contest. One ten to one point, dare I suggest if it were a boxing match it might be stopped, but for the Anagri men at the moment it's a horror story here in this county final big moment in the lives of so many young players out there who hopefully will go on to better things for their respective clubs and county. The kick out isn't a great one from Daniel Kelly, Harley fighting hard to keep it in play just in front of the Arua dugout and the referee is giving him the benefit of the doubt there with a free kick which Porrick Patton will be entrusted with kicking. Patton now taking his time, that's a clever ball towards Harley, oh it's well read Excellently read by Sean McCafferty over there. And he plays it to Jamie Boyle. And Niavura try and break down this very, very tight Eirua defence. Eirua defending from inside 
the opposing half of the field suffocating their opponents. Matthew Maguire beaten in the air by Ferry. Good take from the corner forward. Sending it in the direction of Harley. That's Cameron Harley. But Paddy Gillespie's done well here. Darren Sweeney gives chase for Niavura. Gillespie to McGrath. The captain awaits. Across to Harley once more. Big strong man. Of South African descent, of course. As Paddy Gillespie's pass asks a lot of Darren Gettens and Patrick Gillespie. The Niavura Patrick Gillespie has it. High ball inside. Looks for full forward Cameron Harley. Harley's got it. How is Harley pushed by Porrick Pat? No, oh, wonderful dispossession. It was a hint of a push. But some days you get them and some days you don't. Look at the pace of Patton bursting from defence after making that dispossession. A 50 metre run. Then he's given it away straight into Paddy Delap's hands. The Niavura now with a chance to raid once more. But Harley's back in position. Good work indeed by the big wing half back. But well, Cameron Harley is the obvious target inside in the Niavura full forward line and for once when he got on that ball it looked as if he was going to get a shot away but the brilliance of Porrick Patton denying him the chance and Gettins now giving it to McGrath as Eirua turned defence into attack. McGrath forward to Gettins. 65 metres from the opposition posts out to the wing looking for some options there. Kelly's available. Kelly has it broken away from him. Good defending. Very good defending indeed by Niavura's centre half forward, interestingly. But eventually, David McGurn penalised for tugging on the arm of his opponent and uh, the referee giving the advantage, the free kick, a call to Niavura. 1-10 for Eirua, one point for Niavura. And we're in stoppage time at the end of this first half. We're 40 something seconds into stoppage time. As Niavura look for a way to break down their opponents. Long ball played inside, Cameron Harley the target, but Eru is showing good composure in defence and that's uh, Ryan Patton who's been rather quiet this evening, hasn't had a lot to do, but when it's been asked of him, he stepped up to the plate, good work there from Patton, good pace, Gettins, Darren Gettins this time, looking for McGurn, McGurn looking tired now inside, as Niavura clear their lines in the shape of Connor Boyle, almost cut out by Eamon McGrath, but instead it's Jamie Boyle. Jamie Boyle forward as Sean McCafferty makes himself available. Forward once more to Jamie Boyle. Cameron Harley's available on the edge of the square if they can see him. Ryan Patton sticking close now. A twist and a turn to Manny. This goes a begging. It was dropping short in any event. And I suspect with almost two minutes of stoppage time having elapsed that the referee will sound the half time whistle. There was just that one injury for which stoppage time could be allowed and that came to Darren Gettins midway through the first half but all in all a thoroughly satisfactory first half a first half which has seen Eirua rack up a very impressive lead of 12 points 110 to 1 point and well you can always say there's room for improvement Peter but on the basis of that 30 minutes Eirua are really in the groove at the moment Absolutely Sean there were times in that first half when they played Rolls Royce football and not alone are they playing brilliant football but just an example, that very last attack, the man who got back, the man who dispossessed, was wing half forward Johnny Gettins. And that is typical of this particular under-16 team. There's no superstars, they all work for each other, they work really, really hard. And that typified this kind of a team that this under-16 team is, is Johnny Gettins getting right back to his 13-yard line and dispossession and putting a, what was a potentially dangerous attack back into, into the area of possession. Well, Shane Ward, who teaches in Manor Hamilton, and Gregory Sweeney, who does a long-established NCF milk run, looking content on their way to the changing room. In fact, they're going to stay out on the field with the Aerua players as Niavura make their way into the changing room for their half-time team talk. But at half-time, as we take a brief pause in proceedings, it's been a very good opening 30 minutes for the men from Ballyshannon. 1-10 for Aerua, one point Niavura. Second half about to begin in this under-16 county final, which has certainly favoured Eirua for the opening 30. It's been a virtuoso performance by Shane Ward's men. 1-10 to one point they lead. As the referee Ronan Kennedy throws the ball in to commence the second half and straight away Eirua and Darren Gethins picking up where he left off, breaks the tackle. Side of the right boot inside, the target being Kelly. And it's back now at centre half forward Michael McNeely. Good feet from McNeely. Back onto the right foot. It's dropping under the crossbar. And Jared Boyle plucks it from the clouds. And move the ball forward and turn defence into attack. Forward they come. 
Niall Harley putting in a strong tackle. Jack O'Brien's come away with the ball and giving it to James Ferry. Good move now from the Nia Vura men. Ferry once more to O'Brien. O'Brien spraying it inside to Patrick Delap. Scoring chance, turns. Spraying it inside once more. And that's Sean McCafferty, an ambitious effort. Cameron Harley, they have a goal. Would you believe it? They've got a goal. Sean McCafferty with the initial shot. Cameron Harley following it up after Daniel Kelly parried the ball. And Nia Vura are back in business. Only one minute and one second into the second half. Would you believe it? They've cracked the ball to the back of the Valishanan net. And conceivably, Peter Goller, or could we have game on in McCool Park? Yeah, well, that's exactly the start they needed. Daniel Kelly, the near who was very unlucky. He parried it away, but it fell, it fell to Cameron, and Cameron had no bother in slapping it away. Now, Eru need to respond quickly and effectively, and there's a pick off the ground by Darren Gettins. Yeah. And quickly, we're on the attack again. Patrick Gillespie to take. Jack O'Brien certainly been very strong in the opening minutes of this contest. And this is a Niamh side reborn. Well, the one thing you say that's predictable about underage football is its unpredictability. And that's what we're witnessing here as Cameron Harley continues to cause trouble. Trying to come around the outside again is James Ferry working hard. He's won. And no, in fact, the free has been conceded. Disappointment there for Jack Boyle was the player who was penalised. And Porrick Patton with a chance to clear his lines. That he does. Sending it forward now as Ailu try and regain their control of this game, but not the best of solos from Eddie Lynch. Broken away from him and inside it sent once more to the busy James Ferry, or Jimmy as they call him down in the banks. Ferry does well, Ferry kicks goalward, but Ferry could ill afford that miss and miss it he has in the third minute of this second half. Certainly a lively opening to this new half, and I suppose from a spectator's or indeed a neutral perspective, it was just what the game needed, uh, Peter. Cameron Harley's goal. Absolutely just what the game needed. I had to get that point, it would have been right back in it. They really need to get the hands on the ball, they need to get the ball in direct, they need to do what they were doing in the first 20 minutes of the game, getting the ball in direct to two super forwards in Jimmy McDonald and David McGurn. Horrick Patton's the target of Kelly's kick out. Colin Kelly was also there. Kelly gives the recipient now of Patton's pass. It's given off to Harley. And Patton, oh, that's a poor ball from Harley. It was never going to make Patton. And instead, dancing through. Quick feet from Patrick Gillespie. And whatever these Niavura men were told at half time, or whatever was in the oranges in the changing room, it's had a very desired effect on the part of the West Donegal Club. And look at this. Supporting runs being made there by Hugh Boyle, who's dropped him way back inside his own defence. Indeed, Cameron Harley, when these sides met in the divisional final, played in defence. Just one of a number of positional changes which their management have made. One ten to one point. Nine separate the sides. Three and a half minutes on the stopwatch in this second half. Here goes Sean McCafferty. This is a very difficult and a very big kick for an under-16. He's caught it well, but doesn't have the accuracy on the kick and has sent it wide. Kelly getting ready with another kick out as his players move into position up the field taking up a position on the wing is Michael McNeely one good point in that first half Darren Gettins moves over to the stand side of McCool Park and McCool Park which witnessed Donegal and Antrim on the 15th of May this year not a classic performance Kelly's kick out not particularly good and Jack O'Brien wins the free and the Niamhwara support feeling aggrieved that perhaps there's a ploy of deliberate fouling on the part of the Arua defenders but in their defence well putting in tackles and well the referee deeming them to be unjust O'Brien's taken a knock to the ankle now Tempers indeed flared when these sides met earlier in the season as David McGurn and James Kelly have a word off camera deciding on their next strategy for an Aru attack. So I suspect then that Sean McCafferty will have another go. Chief score getter for Niamhwara in the divisional final replay. There he goes. One from a free already this evening and a Cameron Harley goal. Arua have won four from David McGurn, three from Jamie MacDonald and a point apiece for Kelly, McNeely and Johnny Gattins. So the <coughs> Niamhwara attacker McCafferty wants Darren Gattins to move further away. Up he comes, he's 44 metres out, nothing easy about this. Great kick goalward and Kelly is right back on his goal line where a good keeper should be. Well done by the netminder. Out he comes, Daniel Kelly. The hand pass is mapped up by Harley breaks the tackle of O'Brien this is strong from the big wing back 
forward he comes and the referee is giving it against him well perhaps he responded to the crowd seemed harsh on the young wing back who made a storming run and once more Sean McCafferty will try and lob one into the danger area this time he's going from the hands there's a runner way out in the far side should he opt to use him it's Connor Boyle who's worked hard tonight McCafferty with a huge thumping effort what about that for a kick from nearly 45 metres that was a really good effort two frees now for McCafferty and you just wonder Peter had he gone with the other efforts from the hand might he have been more successful well, there's no doubt about it that was a super kick from all of 44 yards Great kick, and they're right back in it to say every team is a purple patch. Nivora have had their purple patch in the first six minutes of the second half, and they really, really, get, really need to get their hands on the ball. They need to get Eamon McGrath back in the middle of the park, back getting his hands on the ball. Harley's working hard in the recent moments, was unfortunate to concede that last free. Gives it off to his centre half back. Possession conceded by the Ballyshannon men. It's Ferry now to Boyle. Could may have removed Boyle playing a 1-2 with Patrick Delap. Delap continues the run and Boyle is furious there that he was body checked by Darren Gettins. They engage in a little bit of afters as Porrick Patton sends it up the path. Vital chance now as James Kelly wins a little bit of space. Oh, clever run from Callum Kelly. Wonderful balance. Former coach of his, Sylvester Maguire, says he plays football with a smile on his face. This is a great run. That's a great score. Just what was needed from the cornerback who's playing out around the middle of the park. Sensational run. Really great score. And so many good aspects to that attack. James Kelly with the assist after Porrick Patton cleared the ball from defence. And the referee now is calling back play and I suspect that Darren Gettins could be the second Ballyshannon player to pick up yellow and that's for a late tackle on Hugh Boyle. I don't think he can have a lot of complaints about it, Peter. No, it was a yellow card, definitely. It was off the ball and after the ball, the referee let the play go. In that instant, it was credit to Mark young nine Harley who in the first five minutes of this game, the second half has started really well. He's one of the players that has started and the rest of the Aroo team haven't started. Colin Kelly was brilliant in that attack. Uh, but again, Neve were on the tack. And Patrick Gillespie beats him and McGrath to that ball. And here's the other Paddy Gillespie. Does really well from down the Kildoni side of Ballyshannon. Traditional homestead of the Gillespies as Patrick comes forward. Giving it forward now to Michael McNeely, a neighbour and friend. McNeely turning three Neve Wurra players, making it difficult. Gillespie's got to get rid of it. Gettins is there. It's Darren this time. Just picking up that yellow card to McGrath. And forward it goes towards David McGurn. David McGurn weaving a path out around the stand side of McCool Park, kicking from distance. It's ambitious. Has he found his range? Oh, super point from David McGurn. And well, McGurn says, put that in your pipe and smoke it. That's a great point to restore a 10 point margin. Great kick from David McGurn, and it's 1 5 now for Arua. Inadvertently, he said in the out at the outset of the game that Matthew and the Gettys twins, Darren and Johnny, were all brothers. In fact, of course, they're not. They are uh, cousins, and Michael McNeely, not indeed of Kildoni heritage, but rather a native of St. Benildis Avenue in Ballyshannon, as Patrick Rogers and Jamie MacDonald tangle off the ball. Patton takes possession. Patton comes forward, has a tremendous engine, accomplished in the water as well, a keen surfer. Eamon McGrath to Patton once more. Patton from 25 metres, he knows he's landed it. He certainly has. It's a first point for the second half back. And that puts Eirua back into an 11 point lead and they're beginning to crush the life from their opponents almost 10 minutes into this second half. Oric Patton shown his caster, he won the ball way down low, no right to win it, took it back from Eamon McGrath and a beautiful, beautifully slotted ball over the bar. Very Patton shown his class and he needs to now. Very hard to defend against that sort of incisive running which Patton has carried out and now it's Gettins doing it from deep. Johnny Gettins, marvellous run, marvellous goal! That is a superb goal, absolutely sensational from Johnny Gettins. Well, how did he do that? And what right had he got? He got a great point in the first half, but that run from the 45 metre line or thereabouts, I'd suggest we'd probably have to have an action replay, but he beat a swathe of Niavura players soloed off the right three four times kicked off the left that was quite simply brilliant from johnny gettins a goal to grace any county final at any grade 213 now to 1-2 and Arua really in the driving seat what about that
that for a finish. What a super goal by Young Gettins. It's a brilliant goal, a brilliant burst of speed, a brilliant run. Solo with the right, slotted at home with the left. It just goes to show you the importance of the point by Colin Kelly earlier. They gave Aru that little bit of confidence that they needed, that they were lacking in the first six minutes of this second half. Where Neve were, were on the ascendancy, although they were far behind, they had a purple patch in that six minutes. But that Colin Kelly point, and that's all it took to get Aru back in the groove. Well, from the moment he got the ball away out in the wing, there was only one thing on his mind, and that was a goal, and he delivered it with fine, fine style. The referee's having a word now with uh, Connor Boyle of Niamhwara. He's also speaking to one of the Aru attackers. It looks like it's James Kelly. And well, we've already seen yellow cards flash to both uh, Darren Gettins and Jamie MacDonald. And now Kelly and Connor Boyle join that duo in the referee's notebook in what's been in the main a fairly sporting contest. Aru with a huge advantage now. 14 points separate the sides. 2.13 to 1.2. And we're 11 minutes 20 seconds into the second half of the County Under 16 final, August the 31st, 2011. As McGurn sends it back. The target is Gettins, Johnny, the goal scorer, giving it back to McGrath. Yet to get on the score sheet this evening, he's about to rectify that. Oh, it comes back off the upright, we spoke too soon. Eamon will go again, almost intercepted there by Michael McNeely. Instead, it's sent back up the park, Hugh Boyle, the target, getting out in front of Callum Kelly for once. Boyle sending a high one in towards Harley in the danger zone. Maguire drops it, Harley's got it. Watched there by Ryan Patton, keeping close tabs on him. Ryan Patton comes across at the second attempt, charging out unceremoniously and bursting through the tackles and winning the free and sending it forward to Jamie MacDonald. Closely marked in the second half after a brilliant first half. Concedes the free. Carrying the ball just that moment too long. 2.13 to 1-2. 18 minutes remain or thereabouts in this under 16 final. Sent long by Patrick Gillespie. Push in the back, spotted by the referee. Well, Matthew Maguire would appear to be the culprit. Ryan Patton was also standing quite close. Simple free now for Sean McCafferty. Kicks off right and left. This time he'll go from the right. Patton making life difficult for him, standing just in front of him. Here goes McCafferty, his third free of the evening, successfully converted. And Sean McCafferty makes it now 2.13 for Aerua, 1.3 for Niavura, and it's very hard to see a way back, Peter. Yeah, 13 minutes gone in the second half, very hard to see a way back. I suggest that that free kick, had it been any closer, wouldn't have been given. It was a very, very easy free. A referee uh, seemed to be favouring the team that's behind and well behind. I don't think it was a free, and I think Ryan Patton was extremely unlucky to be penalised. Kick out for Daniel Kelly. Has had a quiet enough evening in goal, the way he'd like it. Beaten just once. That goal coming from Cameron Harley after 61 seconds of the second half. Scrappy down there. Battling for possession, very, very hard indeed. But not managing to win it was Colin Kelly. Referees given a free to Niavura. They wanted the advantage. Big midfielder Patrick Gillespie comes across to take. Hugh Boyle said that he'll have a go instead. Sean McCafferty's also out there. It's going to be McCafferty finally to take. 2.13 to 1.3. Huge margin separating the sides. 14 minutes into the second half of this contest. McCafferty kicking goalward, but really for a kicker like Bernard Brogan, that wouldn't have been an easy effort as Paddy Gillespie completes the hard work undertaken by Colin Kelly. And now it's Maguire. Maguire to Gillespie, scrappy, asking a lot of Gillespie. And uh, well, referee giving the free to Darren Sweeney. It's been very well marked this evening. Darren Sweeney has had a very few opportunities to get into the game, but that's sent goalward by James Ferry. And a good score from the diminutive corner forward from the Niavura club. It's now 1-4 to 2-13. And well, small defensive error there, Peter. Small defensive error, but yet I would suggest that the free itself was fairly innocuous, but referee again favoring Niavura, and I think it was a sympathy vote myself. I don't think it was a free yet again. And uh, I would like to see Ronan Kennedy being a little more consistent. Eamon McGrath just beaten in the air there, but Gettins is on hand to mop it up. The goal scorer, Johnny, doing really well. He'll have the bragging rights in Finner over Darren, who's played a Storming match at midfield as well. Wonderful engines, these two guys. As it's kicked probing inside towards David McGurn, caught behind his man, and not able to recover. 
And, uh, well, Patrick Gillespie linking defence and attack now as they look for Boyle, Hugh Boyle there. And Colin Kelly sticking really tight, but Boyle shows great power to shield off the defender. He's given it to Ferry, scorer of Niavura's last point. Ferry trying to carve a path through the defence. Can't do so. Back to Boyle again. McNeely tackling. So too is Gettins. Out to the centre half back. Jack O'Brien. Will he go for goal? O'Brien off the left peg. He's more naturally right footed. And perhaps it showed in the quality of the kick. Chance goes a begging. And Niavura with 14 minutes remaining can ill afford those sort of misses if there's to be any way back for them. Yeah, credit to the Aru defence. They worked tenaciously and they made, they made him kick off balance and as a consequence he kicked it very badly wide. Kelly once more, the goalkeeper. And the Aru support beginning to make some noise. It's surely to be their evening. Bridging a long gap right back to 1997. When Jim Kane was in charge and you'd a, an interesting team in goal, would you believe, back in that day was Carl O'Brien, Dermot Shannon was at full forward, Jack Travers and James O'Donnell played at midfield, Enda McFadden was full back and a certain Anthony Boyle and Tomas McPhailham were the cornerbacks, Michael Lawless indeed and Seamus Kane played at corner forwards, the one and only Shakes went on to become a very colourful character like to call himself the daddy as Porrick Patton bursts from defence here great pace by the centre half back to Kelly, to Patton, clever hands Patton's going to make one of those long bursting runs, he's done 80 metres he hasn't finished yet, to Gillespie now from out the rust now, the side of Ballyshannon oh that's a wonderful move and Paddy Gillespie gets on the score sheet this evening Porrick Patton put it on the plate for him Colm Kelly was also involved and that's a wonderful defensive move 4, 5 and 6 Kelly, Patton and Gillespie. What about the finish from Gillespie off the right peg, Peter? A great finish, but this Porrick Patton boy is something special. We didn't hear of him in the first half because we didn't need to. But when you need Porrick Patton, that's the time he'll shine because he's a class act. 1-10 separating the sides again. Aru at 2-14, Niavura 1-4 and we have 17 and a half minutes on the clock in the second half. Here goes Jamie McDonald again trying to burn his marker, Patrick Rogers. What a battle they've had. Oh, surely pulled down. McDonald is indeed fouled and the referee did the free in. McDonald doing the hard work and a chance now for Aru to further stretch their advantage and David McGurn to come across and kick. Indeed, Aru scores all bar one have come from open play. Just one David McGurn free back in the early stages of this contest. He's surely about to add a second here this evening. Younger brother of Ronan. Son of Enda. And Dintner sends that one between the posts. And a personal tally now of 1-6 for the Airua left corner forward. 2-15 now for the Ballyshan inside. 1-4 for Lee of Wurra. And 2-15 is nice scoring any evening you can get it here. Super scoring, great forward play. Jamie has been quiet in the last 15 minutes, even all through the second half. But it just goes to show you his potential, a great burst of speed. And he was pulled down, dragged down. Potential goal on. And David slotted over as, as you would expect. Eamon McGrath penalised there. Frustration now creeping into the Niavura game as Paddy Gillespie, who got Aru's second last point, and a good one it was, sends it forward again. That's a wonderful pass straight onto the chest of McGurn. McGurn goes around the outside. Oh, the jersey pulled. That's surely a yellow card. If we saw yellow cards for earlier misdemeanours by the likes of Darren Gettins, Jamie McDonald, James Kelly, and Connor Boyle. That was as blatant a foul as you're ever likely to see. And uh, the referee is calling across the Niavura player. And he's in fact cautioning two Niavura players here. One was for an early infringement off the ball outside, and the, one, the second one was for. The blatant tug on the jersey. McGurn again scored the last one and is looking for another. And that's great kicking from both flanks. Left and right, the angle didn't favour a right-footed kicker, but David McGurn slotting it right between the posts. And as we move into the last 10 minutes, the Aerua margin, a very comfortable one indeed. A full 15 points, 216 to 1-4. Well, the maths will tell you that's 22 points to 7. And it's a very, very convincing lead indeed from the Ballyshan inside. 15 in front. As Eamon McGrath takes possession, the big midfielder and captain of the side, back to Porrick Patton, spiritual leader of the defence, forward he sends it, oh the hop red well by David McGurn, allowing it forward to Jamie McDonald, back inside he steps, oh the shot was saved, disappointment there, very unselfish play by the attackers, the ball has ended up in the net, but surely the goalkeeper was fouled, 
and the referee bound to give a free out you would feel well there were so many of them there they were basically queuing up to put it in the net McGurran read the hop very well indeed gave it to McDonald who probably didn't need to cut back outside but on taking the shot he found Jared Boyle in the knee of where a goal in very good form indeed and Jared Boyle picked up a knock there for his trouble Peter Jared Boyle picked up a knock I think Jimmy McDonald followed in I think it was innocuous enough but he did follow in David McGurn, I expected to go on himself, but unselfishly he got to Jamie. Jamie probably turned inside, probably hit it too well. Perfect height for the goalkeeper who saved it. But credit to the goalkeeper, he did make a great save. We'll have a word again about that last day of championship winning side at under 16 grade. They defeated Unions in that final, Peter, by 113 to 17. Carl O'Brien was in goal, Thomas McPhail at right full back, Enda McFadden at full back, and Anthony Boyle at left full back. Must have been one of the few days that Anthony wasn't injured. Peter Gillen was man of the match at right half back. Brian McCafferty, now living in Canada, was centre half back. And Donal Hannigan was left half back. Jack Travers and James O'Donnell played in midfield. John Coyle played at right half forward. Martin Crawford centre half forward. And Brian Merrifield on the left. Seamus Kane, right corner forward. Dermot Shannon, full forward. Son of the late Mick Shannon, great area club man back in the day. And of course, an underage tournament named after him in his honour. And Michael Lawless at left corner forward. Anthony Boyle scored 1-2. Enda McFadden, 4 points. Jack Travers, 4 points. Martin Crawford, 2 points. And Brian McCafferty with a point. Jim Kane was in charge, assisted by Josie Boyle, Teddy Kane, Jerry McDermott and Shamie McPhailham. And very many of those guys are here this evening as Aarua get ready to make some changes, Peter. It's uh, young Eddie Lynch who's leaving the fray. And from uh, the distance that we are away from the action, it's hard to tell who's come in just yet. But we'll get you confirmation of that substitute in just a moment as Shane Ward and Gregory Sweeney opt to shuffle the pack slightly they have been giving a, a number of players a run out over the course of the season as Niamh Wurra now and James Ferry try and get things going from inside their own defence it's Gareth Ferguson we believe who's come on yes indeed wearing 22 all oh, great ball inside for McGrath to McDonald second chance of a goal he'll not miss it oh it's gone over the bar this time a fourth point for Jamie McDonald we were sure it was going to ripple in the back of the net it wasn't to be for McDonald but he's making some great strong runs and a pass from McGrath an absolute peach and now Arua with 2.17 on the board to Niamh Wurra's 1-4 and well just seven minutes of normal time remain in this county under 16 final in McCool Park Gettins driving Aarua forward to Kelly to Gettins once more this time it's Darren inside to McDonald oh, scraped along the ground and Jared Boyle recovered from that earlier injury had to be sharp here's a chance now for Ferguson and Gareth kicking off the left peg and well that one could have gone anywhere but Gareth Ferguson and his very prominent orange boots kicking wide, but an early touch for the substitute and uh, proving their strength and depth there, Peter. Yeah, it's good to see young Ferguson getting on the ball. Father's a bleak man. Mother, of course, is going from Airedale Heights. Great to see him getting on the ball. Great to see him getting around. Jimmy McDonald is going off. And have another substitution. He's played a huge part, Jamie. Four part. points. Yeah. And, uh, well, as Jamie makes his way to the dugout, it's uh, the turn the turn of Callum O'Halloran to come into the action. He's playing very well for the under-14s in defence and uh, Tigerish in the extreme. As that ball is sent forward in the direction of Hugh Boyle once more. The overlap coming from Ferry. Score of a point. And Colin Kelly not giving an inch. That strong play from Kelly. Really, really good stuff. His father, Chris, is down in front of us enjoying the spectacle indeed he's helping out on the line and there'll be a proud bunch of parents and indeed mentors and a rightly so as well as the players when this victory is confirmed in about six minutes or so from now Patton gives it to Harley to Gettins he's hit hard by Patrick Gillespie makes light of it strong run from Darren Gettins really good play really good hand pass it's with Callum O'Halloran now the substitute chance to get in the score sheet back to Gettins it's ricocheted back to O'Halloran Gettins again this is scrappy could there be a score at the end of all of this Gettins goes to ground releases Ferguson the left peg swinging at it but it's dropped a little bit short David McGurn now in a dangerous position going right around the outside giving it off and it's in the back of the net it's rocketed into the back of the net and James Kelly's score won't count I think I think the referees indicated he was in the square oh disappointment for the wing half forward but well the referee 
consulting briefly with his umpire and the score not given 217 to 14 23 points to 7 it's a really strong display from the Ballyshannon boys that chance goes a begging and we're in the last 5 minutes of the contest what a show it's been from Ballyshannon change being made with Patrick Gillespie now leaving it's a third change from the Ballyshannon boys coming in Peter is I'm quite sure at the moment, Sean. Number 20 is Matthew Gettins, cousin of the two twins. Matthew coming, coming in. in and Big well. family day for the Gettins. Absolutely. He joins Callum O'Halloran and young Ferguson, Martin Ferguson, in terms of Gareth Ferguson, I should say, in terms of Aarua subs introduced this evening. And why not? 217 to 1 4. Great performance. We're in the last four minutes. Horrick Patton right on to the chest to the corner forward out to Ferguson once more the big left foot going for a score but well he's certainly making an impression in terms of the wides here this evening disappointment for Gareth Ferguson 217 to 1-4 as Jared Boyle gets ready with another kick out he's had quite a few of them to take this evening as Connor Boyle comes forward giving it to a centre half back Jack O'Brien needs a miracle now into the corner busy out there is Sean McCafferty joint top scorer with three frees this evening Cameron Harley with a goal but it's been a very poor night for the Neave lads credit to them for being in a county final but well they'd have scripted it differently down in Anagri oh there's a crack at the goal and it was big Cameron Harley once more has scored one this evening but well it wasn't to be on that occasion opportunist strike felt like going for it had a pop at the posts Three minutes remain, Peter. It's going yeah. to be a stamina limitation noise. time now. It has been for a long time for Nivora. Credit them, they're, they're battling on, they're trying ahead, but the heart is going on them. In fairness, the heart is going on them. And then four or five scores in a row from Aerua, just within 10 minutes of the resumption, has taken the heart completely out of Nivora. And it's been like this now for a long time. And it's damage limitation time for Nivora. Great catch from McGrath. 14 year gap about to be bridged. 97 they were last champions. Great night for young Callum O'Halloran as well. Standing small, he's still in under 14. And of course, very many of these under 14s. Interestingly, coached by a certain Jim Kane. Club stalwart to the core. Manager supreme at so many different levels. And has that All Ireland Community Games title from back in 1990 to his credit. And a certain. Michael Ward and Stephen Ward, Kenneth McGurn, Gavin Rogers and many others pull the strings. Free in for the Niamh men to be taken by...